Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. First things first, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And whilst you're there, let me know how you are doing out of 10. For me this week, I think I'm like a nine and a half out of 10. That's really high for me, but it's been a really good week and some really exciting things going on. Um, low of the week is that we're actually trying to be early this morning because we've got a busy day and I'll explain all about that in a moment. But the um, steers at the end of the tuna shed just over there, decided to get out into the um, cows that are still in calf at the side of the drive, which was really annoying. Could have really done that this morning, but actually I didn't have to deal with it. Dad sorted it out. Apparently the reason is because the gate swings too well and it's like sits perfectly in the hole. So he's actually had to get some electric fence wire and uh, tie it up so that they can't get out. Um, because obviously if it dragged, you know, they wouldn't be able to lick the bolt open. Highs of the week, well, there are a couple, really. We've had a really busy week. We've had lots done, which is quite nice. The weather's been good. We've had some rain overnight, as you can see. Damp again, which is perfect for those grass seeds that we put in last week. I'm really, really pleased we got those in. And on a personal note, I actually gave blood for the first time this week, which is, um, yeah, something I've been putting off for quite a long time. Kate's given blood like five or six times, something like that. And uh, she encourages me to go and I was always really nervous because I was a bit funny about the needles because once I had some bloods taken when I was really ill and when they pulled the needle out, it just sent me funny. Um, but I now realise that was because I was ill and not because I have a problem with needles. Um, but yeah, it was just a really interesting exercise to go and do. And I would encourage more people to do it because apparently there's only 4% of the eligible population of the UK actually give blood, which is pretty low. And I think we've only got three days worth of blood stocks so it wouldn't take a lot going wrong for us to run out of blood. So it's something that I'm going to definitely continue doing. And I hope maybe this will get some of you guys to do it as well. Something else, actually, whilst I was giving blood is I had a really interesting chat with the nurse who did it for me. Her name was Majida. She was a Muslim lady. And she was telling me about when she had kids that she wanted them to have a healthier lifestyle and a healthier diet. So she started reading a lot about agriculture and about farming and about permacultures and things like that. And then she started buying all of her milk direct from the farm. She started buying all of the meat direct from the farm. And when she does buy things from a supermarket, she always buys British produce where she can. And she always looks for the British label over everything else, which I thought was really interesting. We had a proper chat and Kate was like, I could see you jabbering away over there and, you know, thought you're all right. And we had a, me and her had a really good chat about it. And uh, she was just really positive about British agriculture and about how she knows um, as a consumer that we have to adhere to so many regulations and jump through so many hoops and we'd have a better sort of uh, system than in other countries and how she doesn't want to be buying imported food because she knows that we have better food here and it was really nice because I think a lot of the time we get sort of suckered into this idea that people just buy the cheapest thing and a lot of people do but it is nice to know that that message that we're driving home all the time with like red tractor and the British label and British farming is actually sinking in somewhere down the line. So it was really nice to uh, to have that chat with her. So I mentioned that we're trying to be early today and why is that? Well, we are off on a little bit of a road trip. Baldy Senior and I are going to Yorkshire. We're gonna go and look at two or three farms, some bulls that we've got spotted from the online database, some that Ursula at the Stabilizer Cattle Company has sent over and um, some that we've spoke to farmers about and whatever else and see if we can get fixed up with this replacement for Hornblower um, because we're soon going to need him because we normally put the bulls out beginning of June, like the end of May, beginning of June time and it's now what, like the middle of May? So yeah, we've only got a couple of weeks to get sorted out. We want to get up there and make sure that nobody nicks anything that we are looking at. So we really do need to crack on. this archways 
That's really cool. Wow, what a day yesterday was. I'm not sure how I actually feel. I think I'm just incredibly confused. It was such an interesting day. We got to see three different farmers in three different parts of Yorkshire. And uh, we also got to see the feed efficiency unit as well. So it was, it was mega busy. We got back late last night and I'm just so confused. Like what bull to buy? Um, oh my God, it is such a difficult decision to make. There's so many incredible bulls out there, but I'm just, mind blown one way or another so top bulls for me well we're trying to get a bull that's easy calving so we can put them onto heifers um and put them onto a few cows and put them onto our stabilizer that we've got but we also want to produce heifers with it so we want to have some really good um heifers for replacement in a couple of years time that's pretty much the idea of what we're trying to achieve with the bull that we're buying right now the top two bulls for me probably were the first one at Skelton Farms uh, with John Ainsley there. That was a beauty of a bull, a uh, top 5% bull. Uh, really nice, nice bloke. The farm was incredible. They run 500 suckler cows there and that is just like the dream. Uh, he, it was an amazing place, really on the ball. He turned that farm around. And it was such an interesting guy. Um, so that was one of the best bulls for me. And the other bull that I'm sort of in my head, I'm tossing up between that one and the one at Wheatonwald that we saw last, um, that was a bull called Yorick. That bull was a top 1% bull, so he's more money. Um, and I could, but I could understand, like, I understand how it works the, with the figures and like why you would pay more money for a, a better bull, but oh, more money is just, it's just getting spiles out of control if you're not careful. Um, and I do, like, in my head, I'm like, we've got an expensive month, we've got more expense coming, like, you know how the cash flow is, and you're just trying to think, like, is it justifiable because you don't really see anything from that bull for two years, although you use him straight away, it takes sort of 12 months before you get any calves and then you get another 12 months before you can sell anything or bull anything or whatever else that comes from that bull. So I think there's a lot of decisions to be made and a lot of thinking to do, but I am mind blown. And I've, saw, I've seen some amazing stock. Wow, amazing views, um, just, unbelievable day really really good great day sometimes you learn a lot as well i learned a lot from john ainsley when we're talking to him and um i think it's good to have a day off the farm sometimes because you can bring it back and put it into practice what you learn and uh yeah it's only going to benefit you long term so it was an amazing day out so i probably should explain to you how the pricing system works because it's very different to other breeds um but actually as a commercial farmer i think it's a really refreshing system your bulls are set out in increments. So you have your top 1%, 5%, 10%, so on and so forth. Going down, I think then in 5% till you get to a top 35% or something like that bull. 
Um, and the price does the same thing. So your top 1% are the most expensive, but they're all on the same level. And then your top 5% are the second most expensive, but they're all on the same level. And then top 10% and so on and so forth. And you can, it's all based upon the figures and the um, profit indexes of those figures. So it, it's really fair system. It works really well. And it's also good for you as a farmer because you know what you're going to have to spend before you get there. You're not going to get sort of uh, told that you're going to have to spend a lot more money than what you thought before you left the farm. And the system works the same way as well when you're buying heifers and breeding stock because you have your first crosses, which are your cheaper ones, which is like a 50% stabiliser. It's then more money for a second cross, which is 75%. 87.5% being a third cross and up to your F5, which is your most expensive animal. And it's then, I believe, your pure animal. It's your fifth cross. So it's like 98 plus percent um, cross. And that is then classed as a pure animal, I believe. And that is the most expensive. And then you pay a set fee on top of that if it's in calf. I can't remember now off the top of my head, but I think it was either £200 or £250 when we bought ours. Um, per animal because it's essentially paying for the fact that you're buying the calf as well and it's really fair and it works really well and it, it's really good because then you can choose where you want to go and get your stock from you can choose whether you like the farmer whether you like the area where whatever it is that you want to choose so it's a really fair system and it just it works and I think it's it's so refreshing to see a breed society that kind of they, they think about it differently they think about what you want as a farmer. They're thinking at it as a commercial point of view. They're not thinking as a pedigree point of view, which is very different type of farming in my opinion. Um, so it's really nice to see. And uh, yeah, so that just gives you a bit of an idea as to how those bulls, when you saw the top 10%, top 5%, whatever, when I put it on the screen, just gives you a bit of an idea of the pricing. So we've made our decision. We've actually bought a bull. We've bought Skelton Yeti, which was the first bull on the video. Now, the reason why we bought him, partly because his figures speak for himself, he's a great bull for making cows, or his weaning weights are good, he's got good um, calf fertility, everything, or it ticks all the boxes for producing good breeding heifers. He also has a good finishing index, which means that he's gonna produce good meat animals. But we also really just liked John the farmer. John there, it, the farm speaks for itself. I mean, what he's done with the place is incredible. And I felt like he would take you under his wing. It, it was almost like he wanted to take you under his wing. Um, and that's not taken away from any of the other farms that we went to, because they were also incredible. But there was just something that stood out about John. And uh, when Ursula, who's, who deals with all the stabiliser cattle sales in the UK, well, in England, should I say, um, when I spoke to her, she asked me that question. Why, what was it that stood out about that bull? Why did I buy it? And I told her it, it was just John. Amazing bloke, amazing farm. So where do we go from here? Well, he's got to be TB tested before he comes in on farm, partly because we're down with TB, but it's something we always do anyway, just for a bit of peace of mind. And then he can be shipped down. So hopefully by the end of next week, we can uh, get someone in to bring him down. He's also been t uh, semen tested, sorry. So that's another thing about the stabilizers. When you buy a stabilizer bull, they actually semen test them before they let them leave their farms, which is really good because it just gives you another bit of peace of mind. And I don't know any other breed society that does that. Um, so you know it's gonna work when it gets here, which is just awesome. So he's been semen tested, he's passed all of that. Hopefully he passes TV test and then you'd be ready to work. And that's it for another week, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I would honestly really appreciate it. And whilst you're there, let me know how you are feeling out of 10. But it gives, I think, a bit of a changeable weekend, but not a bad weekend. Enjoying this little bit of uh, warmer weather. Can't complain too much. Have a great one, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.